and welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to a Beyond the Summer presentation of the WPC Ace League here. It's Vici Gaming versus Orange Esports in a best of two series. Back on the mic, I am Blaze. Happy to bring you guys this one game Ten here. We're going to be subbing remaining. out uh, between me and I believe Pimp Monkle uh, between game one and game two. Five seconds. Because uh, I do remaining. have another best of three that I have to broadcast simultaneously, essentially. So. No good there. Reserve Can't be in two places time. at once. But I am able to stick around for this one last game, and uh, hopefully it'll be good as the one that we most recently got to cast. Uh, checking out the last game of Orange vs. Newbie was actually extremely exciting, and uh, I recommend if you haven't seen it that you go watch Reserve that one. Time. But this one has a lot of potential to Radiant blow us away as well, back. so let's check it out. Um, starting things off, we look at the draft here. We do see Bat Rider and Centaur taken off the board by Vici. They actually opened up with their second pick, Templar Assassin slash Sand King, which is pretty interesting to me, but Vici Gaming are doing so well in this tournament that you can't Ten argue seconds, with whatever they want to go with. And in this case, they're going to put up early aggression. They've been watching these games. Five they know that if remaining. Orange are uh, taken down in the early game, that they tend to have a lot of problems pulling back from it. But uh, anyways, we do see Orange picking up for themselves the Invoker and the Shadow Shaman. The Lycanthrope and the Ancient Apparition were the bands this time around. So, leaving a couple of different options in the pool, but neither one of the Orange's common replacement bands Dia gets picked up band. here in the first phase. So it should be a pretty interesting one here. Orange, they're looking to take a game tonight. This has pretty much been a full triple header with them having a lot of difficulties. But now, uh, looking into... This matchup here, Shadow Shaman, great controlling support, some good push remaining. potential, and finally getting Ysera on his Invoker, a hero that he loves to play. Five seconds so, remaining. we'll see if they can make something happen, but for right now, all eyes on Vici is they have just so much quick burst potential. They've got physical Reserve damage from time. TA, magical damage from Sand King, and right now, if they make the right rotations on the SK, I, I don't know what else to say. I mean, putting FY on a hero like Sand King is just game-breaking. It really just completely turned things on its head because, well, his game sense is, as far as moving around, as far as knowing when to gank and when to farm, and uh, when to make those huge bang. plays happen. So, FY Sand King is what I'm looking forward to, but obviously they don't have to run it just on him. We've been seeing some some good supportive play as a whole from the VG Gaming squad. Anyways, uh, next bands are taking a little bit of time here, but we do see the Slark taken Ten out. Soxus doesn't have the Slark, he doesn't have the Weaver, that kind of leaves the Marana. Five seconds and uh, VG remaining. Gaming do have second or first pick in Phase 2, so... Sox is He's kind of limited time. on his options here. He might have to go for something completely different, but picking a life stealer into a Templar Assassin, not all that favorable. As well as just the fact that they have this invoker lane against TA is gonna give them a bit of a hard time. So we'll see what kind of recovery picks they can go with, but for right now, Vici Gaming, they seem to be drafting extremely well. Dia team we do back. see that uh, the clockwork is going to be the subsequent ban for Orange, but what does that leave for Winter to pick up? No Centaur, no Bat Rider, no Clockwork. That kind of just leaves the Nature's Prophet or Darkseer. Like, he has run a couple of other heroes alternatively, but remaining. not here in the WPCA. So, looking for a, a new light at the end of the tunnel for Orange Esports, trying to bring themselves back in and take some Reserve games time. down. But Darkseer's going to be the other ban, so they'll just snap up the Visage, gets the in Radiant my opinion, the two pick. most aggressive early game supports, and from there they can start just controlling lanes all across the board. Um, Sand King and Visage are very kill-reliant heroes. They love to get that level 6 as quickly as possible, and Sand King needs to get his Blink Dagger relatively rapidly as well. So it is very important that they get kills, but they certainly have some of the most potential on the map to do so. In turn, Shadow Shaman is a pretty good hero for a defensive position. As soon as the Burrow Strike Ten is expended, you pretty much have a free opportunity to Shackles, unless you're up against a carry like Wraith King. Five seconds so, remaining. good positioning, good timing of ability. Shadow Shaman still has a lot to bring to the table, but we'll Reserve see who he's time. going to be laning with with these next few picks. For now, um, they've got their solo mid, they've got their support. Could go for really any route, of course. They don't have to pick up the support here. It's not like Vici Gaming are going to pick up a third support. So Winter's going to secure his Nature's Dire Prophet. Has some good offlane potential, but with this combination, Burrow Strike, Radiant Soul Assumption, Waveform, this is plenty to bring down a Nature's Prophet if he oversteps his bounds. So Winter's going to have to go Boots first once again, and he's going to have a hard time of things. Either way, we're going to see a lot of magic damage flying about from Vici Gaming and TA to kind of reinforce that in the mid to late game. Um, they just have really good lanes. I mean, like, how do you deal with this when you have so much potential uh, for kills and for rapid farming that uh, brings you to the mid to late game? Vici Gaming seemed to have just 
torn apart this draft, but that's assuming what we've seen remaining. from Orange Esports so far. If we look at their potential at, at like maximum, just Reserve getting out time. of the hyperbolic time chamber, they're going and Jet. taking off the weights and going all out. What do we see Dyer from these guys? The Invoker, I have very high skill cap here. Nature's Prophet, a huge amount of potential from uh, various players. So if we see those guys play to their highest potential, I actually do think that uh, Orange have a chance to take the game, but they definitely have to make some big things Ten happen, and Vici might remaining. have to make a few mistakes. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. So we're going to see some push momentum coming in from Orange. Of course, we do have the Mass Serpent Wards as well as Treants to bring down towers rapidly with the help of Chen's neutral creeps. But Vici so far have some degree of counter push. It's not substantial, just Sandstorm under the tower, maybe Waveform, but that would be if they're looking at the aggressive try. If they're just looking for an offlaner, they have a bajillion different options that could handle this. Um, they're going to ban out the Pugna here just to make sure they don't have Radiant to deal with full-on push potential. Uh, in that case, it would be like a solo invoker, solo Furion, and then the Pugna would be in the tri lane. But a hero that I would like to see, and I think would be appropriate, would just be a key off lane keep of the light. You give him a solo lane, he can farm up an early axe, he can remaining. continuously counter push against the creep based Five push of remaining. Orange Esports. Uh, won't be able to do much against Mass Serpent Wards once those go down, but that's counting Reserve the Shadow Shaman to be level 6, which is much later in the game where you can make more rotations, initiate with Sankings, Blink, so on and so forth. So I would definitely say that Keep of the Light would be an interesting pick to uh, add to the table just for the counter push alone, let alone his newly buffed Aghanim Scepter being a, a possibility to pick up. But for now, Tinker. it's going to be the Tinker, and the, the marches have much Radiant the same effect. No Ags, but cer certainly some scalability on this hero, and he is going to be dropping down a couple of marches, clearing out the waves very effectively, and uh, it, now it just comes down to lanes. Do they run like a safe lane Templar, a mid tinker, an aggressive tri lane of SK Visage Morphling? Um, do they run an Ancients tinker that comes down to counter push whenever his tower is pressured? I don't know. It's going to be weird. But uh, I think if they give TA and tinker solo lanes, Ten they're going to be feeling much remaining. better about themselves as far as how they're progressing into mid game. Five seconds remaining. So, a good time. game uh, already looking to be for Vici Gaming. They have so much nuke, and this could easily get out of hand for Orange. If they don't really play their cards appropriately, they don't uh, play carefully when they need to and start being aggressive when they need to, uh, they're going to be overwhelmed very quickly. Laser rockets, waveform soul assumptions, remaining. all these crazy yeah. burst combos, people are going to evaporate. And when you look at Orange's lineup, you don't think tanky. You see, invoke, you see four intelligence heroes and a Marana. You see people that if they don't get Hand of God or Mech'd within one or two seconds of a team fight, they're already dead because of how quickly Vici Gaming can burst down. So I just I don't think the non-durable lineup is going to work out for them. And it just comes down to whether or not they get the early momentum. If they get the level advantage, they'll get some extra strength, obviously. And that will put Shen close enough to maybe the Hand of God. But I'm skeptical at best. Vici Gaming certainly have a lot of potential to take this game away by storm. So we'll see how effective it may be as we approach into the early stages of this game. Right now, though, I think it's going to be um, FY, Frenmure, and Silar down on the bottom lane, and then Ten RTK can take up remaining. the mid or safe, and Super would take whatever's left. But just giving signature Five heroes, like Silar was the most... The, the person that played Morphling the most pre-rework, where he gets his ability to attack and cast during waveform back. That was the, the shift that brought him back into the meta for a couple of teams, but Siler, Prepare he was the one who ran battle. it in spite of that and had a tremendous win rate on it. So, very aggressive player, loves to get that E blade up, and they certainly have a lot of different ways to make this follow through work. But I also find something pretty interesting here Winter's movements to start things off. I'm going to try to prevent Sandstorm uh, farming, essentially. He's going to say, okay, if we stock the, stop these camps from spawning, we stop them from stacking, we should be able to control everybody else other than the Sand King and come out on top. But that theory also maybe includes the Ancient Camps. If the Tinker stacks Ancients, then you're still kind of shit out of luck as far as controlling those big item pickups. Still, Winter starting off with a Sentry and an Observer. We'll see if he commits both just to the camps. One here, as well as one like up here, just still blocks it, but also gives you some good vision. And he should be A-OK -okay to just kind of hold on this Western Front and with the boots first 
survive on that offlane. I mean, it's not like they have the most range of initiation. Grave Chill's good, but it's not going to guarantee a Burrow Strike unless Sand King's already extremely close at hand. Luckily, he went for Boots first as well, so it evens out a little bit. But even still, rank 1 Burrow Strike is not the best for range of initiation. I'm curious how they're going to run the offlane, though. Um, if we're going to be seeing a solo mid Templar Assassin going for a bottle rush, then that has to mean ROTK offlane. We've seen some weird uh, offlaners from ROTK. He's run Lifestealer offlane, he's run a bunch of different combos, but Tinker is one that I personally have not spectated and look forward to see in its full effect. So the word comes down here. It is going to be scouting the pull, but not blocking it as far as I can tell. So he'll see the rotations, and uh, the one good thing about this ward is that it's very common for supports to smoke right around here. Sometimes they'll smoke around here as well, but the, the idea is that if you see where the supports go, and you see them moving very early, then you're going to be able to control the position. On the other hand, in contrast, we actually don't see any smokes to deceit picked up just yet. Smoke on the Chen for the Radiant side, but for Vici Gaming, none whatsoever. They do, however, drop down a sentry just to make sure this pull is unblocked, but... Uh, obviously no wards to be found. So I'm going for some quick intros before we get underway. Another sentry ward there. But anyways, uh, looking over the side of Orange here. Looking for some wins. Uh, had a rough time so far this evening in this triple header, and now they go up against uh, one of their most challenging opponents, Fichu Gaming. The battle begins. Here in WPC Ace and a best of two. Double a, a diamond going to be picked up by SK. Starting things off for introductions, we're going to be looking at the Nature's Prophet, played by Winter in the Offlane with Boots first. Solo mid is going to be played by Isera. Very frequently loves to run the Exhort, but um, just depends on how impactful he feels the Wex is going to be at any given time. Certainly a mana reliant bunch, this feature gaming, but... The best part about Wex, I think, is the fact that you can tornado the Tinker along range. You cancel his BOTs, and you might be able to lock him down with a Cold Snap, so... That's my two cents on that, but... I, honestly, either one of them can work. A Shackles guarantees a Sunstrike, an Arrow obviously as well. So, we'll see what he ends up opting for as he approaches level 3. In the meantime, we do see Insidious C running on the Chen. Going to be farming up his jungle with no camps blocked. Sharky's going to be supporting down on bottom lane on the Shadow Shaman. And that will leave Xox to play on the Mirana with Arrow first. Nice Wildwing spawn already coming out against the TA. Burning through Refraction and just causing some grief. It's very frustrating to lane against this at such an early stage. Winter going for some cliff jungling. Are we serious? FY digging a tunnel and he's gonna find him. Winter now in a bad little spot here. Um, of course, when he did have the option of going for Sandstorm and just drooting him down, but Winter, he has some tangos of his own. He's gonna go on the run. One more Burrow Strike available now, but the action is actually here on the mid. The Tornado plus Cold Snap brings Super extremely low so that he can't actually help to try to bring down Winter. One more Burrow Strike connected, but Winter drops down Dyer's to 130 HP, and it's going to be FY to be kind of walking away empty-handed. He doesn't have any mana now. He Winter, of course, can just teleport wherever he pleases. So the only thing that he's sad about is the fact that his jungling got disrupted. But he can pretty much do that anywhere. He's got the, the Radiant Jungle across the board fully available to him. Anyways, to, to finish the intros there, I've pretty much covered all of orange so looking over at Vici we do have Tinker offlane via ROTK going for some March machines push and farm but can see the arrow attempt not even close here in the mid lane super is running on the Templar assassin but low on HP low on mana tornado will go and super man Isera could have almost killed him off if he had checked his mana pool he would have realized that there was no refraction of course if there was a refraction, Isera would have made the mistake of going for the auto attack, but from our bird's eye view, we can tell that that actually would have been first blood in favor of Orange if he had gone for the kill. Still scared of the refraction, as OP as it may be. And uh, we move on forward with the rest of the roster. Siler going to go hard on to Winter here. Big damage from that waveform, but they don't have Soul Assumption. Need the last right click, and they get it. First blood to Fenrir to start things off. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Down a bottom lane, Tinker's going to drop down as well. They were able to lock him down well enough. Uh, it looks like they didn't get in range for the Shackles, but they did get the arrow at the least and were able to deliver some good right-click damage. So, nice little pickoff on him as well. He's just going to stroll his way down there with Boots of Speed and maybe look to stack... Oh, won't be able to stack Ancients for another two minutes, it looks like. 
In the meantime, Super gonna bottle up this Illusion Rune. If I've missed anybody else, uh, I guess it's Fenrir on the Vistage and FY on the Sand King. So, covering those bases, we've got our intros, and now we've got a push on the bottom tier one. March Machines will come out, but Shackles will set up the easiest arrow of Sox's life, and this should be enough damage with the Aether Shock to guarantee an easy kill, but a rotation coming in from the Vistage. Fenrir looking for an opportunity. Body blocked a little by the Treants, and now getting right-click down. Not a good spot for him to be in, but fortunately there's no way for them to actually pin him down. Giving space for Super, though, on the mid lane here. He's going to actually get some 1v1 time up against the Invoker. However, the CMP, big damage from the EMP. He's forced to exhaust his mana pool via Refraction, and then he ends up getting hit by it anyway. So, very costly for him. Luckily, he has that full bottle to work with. Aestrian picked up by Sharky. Going to make a rotation here. Oh, please don't go on this illusion. Uh, they're going to see it's not actually real. And uh, the haste isn't going to actually put any pressure on Super, but gives him mo some mobility to maybe try to go for the Tinker once again. <laughs> Meanwhile, in top lane, a lot of pressure coming in for this Morphling. Radiant's Siler Morphling, 31 last hits, because this guy has morphed an agi strength to agi ratio of 15 to 48. This guy's got a lot of morph going on. He's going to use his intreds Radiant's to waveform and clear out this attack. wave with no problem. With Basilius on, the creep waves tanks that many more auto attacks, and now they're going to deliver some hefty hits onto this tier 1 top. Good damage there, Radiant structures and fortification are already forced out. And with a push lineup, you don't want to really be put on Radiant's the defensive, but on the defensive attack. they will stay. There's really no two ways about it. Sand King going to approach level 2 with this little pick. But they're going to look to make sure that they zone out Radiant's the Nation Prophet. The Grave Chill, like attack. I said, not enough to set up a level 1 Burrow Strike, but one more last hit on the tower, Radiant's and they get a hefty sum fallen. of gold. They're distributed evenly across the team. Now we see a smoke movement with a Hellbear Smasher. Easy pick on ROTK if they catch him behind the tower, but it just comes down to if they think he's going to be stacking his Ancients, if he's going to be retreating for any real reason other than his creep wave being under his tower. So two supports missing, long duration on these Shackles, 2.75, and they do have two points in Test of Faith. So this should be an easy kill if they get close enough for the Shackles, and Winter's going to be the one to try to start it off. He's going to drop off the... Nature's Call, and actually, this is not looking good. The Shackle still gets in range, though. Wow, they actually got the longest range Shackle you can expect, but that suits the speed for you, I suppose. They're able to close the distance, get a very good channel off, and get a clean kill. So, committing four. The question is, will they actually be able to get the tower out of it? And it doesn't look good. They already used the Nature's Call. Those Treants are dead. And, yeah, they're not really putting too much direct pressure here. So, it's just some more free experience for Fenrir. Now, a little bit of a bait with this Illusion Rune, but it's not going to be denied. Super picks it up, and uh, now, really, the only one that seems to be doing great on the map is this Invoker. The Marana is doing well in this last hit. Sox's is, is 35 for 5, but what he's going to be able to turn that into compared to what Siler is going to be able to turn his farm into, it, there's no comparison. This is going to be absolutely Radiant's absurd timing for Lincoln Sphere or whatever attack. Siler wishes in the very near future. And along with that, again, running right now 91 damage on the Morphling here, and uh, substantial attack speed, 196. Yeah, he is very primed to really just deliver a lot of damage to this tower. Dyer's In the meantime, there's not really too much going attack. on elsewhere. Traps heads up here, and it's just gonna break down to the landing phase once again. Very, very casual, very laid back. Some kills here and there, but none in the cards just yet. We do see that Tanking opted to go for Sandstorm, level 2, at level 3. So he's going to be able to clear out this double stack very easily and make his way towards this Blink Dagger at a pretty good pace. I mean, they already got that tier 1, so I was got some, put some good damage into this one as well. So that Blink should be at a very good timing, to be honest. Denied. In the meantime, Tinker's a little bit lost here. He's level 5, which is not too shabby for an offlaner at this stage no matter what. But he's not really farming the way a Tinker would hope to be. He wants to get BOTs, Blink, etc., but far from it, at least at the moment. Level 4 Nature's Prophet, just trying to farm up a poor, poor Midas, but not finding any opportunities just yet. Siler's so keeping a pretty good lockdown on this lane and even delivering out some pretty big items here. Magic Wand, Aquila, he's looking to just completely dominate on this top lane. He doesn't want to be unseated at any point in time. 
We do see the smoke movement here. Centaur and Hellbear. Obviously with a chant, it's max duration, no uh, limited bottom tower is under by the Enchantress. But that's got to be a really good Tornado Cold Snap in order to actually get this. Well, now that I think about it, Sharky's pretty quick on his feet, but Super's quicker. Pop on the Phase Boots, has the haste, and is able to completely dodge out this Smoke Ink. Tis now going in, they're going to pop off the Tornado, the EMP. He still has that haste right though. Will pop it if he needs it, but he feels like he doesn't need it. Second like caught inside the Sprout and melts. The dust comes through and Super gets bursted. Test the faith and right click. I'm not sure why he didn't top that haste room. Thought he could get away without it, but Winter says no. Caught in the sprout, pop with the dust. And uh, that's the fourth kill on the board for Orange, getting some really nice early momentum. Unfortunately, they certainly need it as the cores are Dyer's really picking up their items. The attack. Soul Ring comes out onto the Tinker. Actually, now Cold Snap on the Tinker. Ysera going hard. This is why you don't give him Invoker. He's getting another kill. Just completely underestimating this Invoker, and the Wex is doing work. So this is going to give momentum for their team as a whole. Siler really the one that is the only one prospering from it. He's getting the distraction he needs to continue his farming spree and max out his net worth. He's still top of the charts, and I believe he's going to maintain that position for quite some time, even though his opponents are picking up the hands of Midas. Mechanism going to come out for Chen at a relatively good pace, but it's it's definitely not as, as fast as you would hope. Let's let's see, yeah, Midas on Marana, and on the Nature's Prophet, possibly on the Invoker, though you see it less frequently with the Wax build. Ancient Stacks coming in for Fenrir. This is going to be a triple for the Tinker once he gets around to it, and uh, that'll put him halfway to his BOTs for sure. Speaking of farming jungles for big items, we see the Blink Dagger money is already in his hands. He's gonna... he has full unreliable gold, there's no reason not to buy it. And yeah, he is in a position where he can make things happen across the map once he gets that Blink. So, go back to Fountain, yes. pick up the Blink Dagger, TP down, and they can probably make some big changes here. Sox will try to finish off the tower, but it is denied Dyer's by the Templar Assassin. The Test of Faith denied. will send the Priestess of the Moon back home. They now do have Master Serpent Wards available, not really offering them much kill potential because uh, they're up against Phase TA, they're Burrow Strike Sand King. Yeah, they don't have much as far as ward traps go, but they what they do have is a lot of tower push. No Forward Spirits, but Master Serpent Wards, Chen, Major Prophet, it should all be enough. They know, however, that there is going to be pressure coming in from RTK to bring down these Ancient Creeps, Boots to travel well on their way. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Master Serpent Wards will be expended for the first time here on the mid, and Familiars are going to try to chew through those. Let's see if he turns his attention. No, he's focused on these, this tower. Dropping very low, and it will, it will get the last hit. Radiant's Shadow Shaman going to finish it off here. Attack. So, doesn't even care about the Familiars, despite the fact that they obviously give a nice sum of gold. They're there for the tower. That's what the lineup is all about, and they stay focused on their objective. Very nice and done. So, mech very soon on the Chen. Like, it was kind of slow before, but now he's only 450 gold off. We do see damage on top, though. Big damage from the Morphling. Very nice aggressive movement there. Used his Replicant to get even closer. And then the Waveform, of course, to knock him down. Now, Strength Morphing to try to survive, but it looks like Ysera is going to be able to finish it, or at least that's what Winter thinks. Why did Winter stop that TP? And after it looks like he just decided to TP down bottom, and... I really am not too sure about that. If he had gone through... That Morphling's down to 400 HP, doesn't have much mana left to work Illusion. with, but in the end, they decide better of it. Siler walks away, and at least they've forced him off the lane for a short time period, unfortunately at the cost of Marana's life. Many. So Moonlight Shadow will pop off. We're going to see Sand King doing some big damage with his Blink Dagger. Epi Blink on top of so the Nature's Prop, and they're able to get a very nice kill there. So, Mrana trying to Moonlight to help them out. Not going to work out for them. Now they'll make some aggressive movement here in the Dire Jungle, though. Smoking up, they might find Siler once he returns to farm. RTK 400 off. Let's just check the item progression as a whole. Morphling very well on his way to the Lincoln Sphere. Sitting on 1,200 gold. Along with that, the Tinker... I think this, uh, if that was a full stack of golems, then I think this stack would do it, but he might be just a little bit gold shy. Anyways, we are seeing the hard push coming in on the top lane. 
It is uh, winter as Dyer's well top here and available, under and they should be able to take this Radiant's tower down with extreme ease, attack. not just relative ease, like it's gone. 100%. Now they can commit the master towards the Dyer's tier 2 tower, and that's going to force Vichy Gaming to fight. Radiant's Epicenter is on cooldown for 74 seconds. Attack. They can't lose both towers up top. They need control of their jungle. They need, just in general, to be in a position where they can actually fight and move about the map. So it would be very costly if they lost this tower, but Dyer's the Serpent Wards go down. Is under Fortification unavailable, but TP from TA should give them enough space to clean this up. So the Sharky's wards turn into a little bit of tower damage and a lot of gold for TA. Yeah, sorry if the hype levels aren't through the roof. It is like 8:40, and I haven't, I've, I'm on a North American sleep schedule, so I essentially pulled an all all nighter just to make sure I could cover all these. And yeah, it's taking a toll on my vocal cords, but we'll we'll get there. I'll just get some a nice cup of tea or something, and I'll be back up to snuff. Anyways, uh, so far a pretty chill match, five for three. In favor for of Orange right now, they also have the Tower Momentum, which has evened out the Gold Graph, but they really need to make these Hanamiduses work for them, because otherwise, uh, Vici Gamer are just going to be able to obliterate them with their huge kill potential and team fight uh, capabilities. And that mostly comes from when Siler picks up his first big item, Ultimate Orb available here, and now looking Radiant's for middle tower is under the attack. recipe, of course, 1325. Meantime, Super is going to go in and just focus down on the Froshan. Down to negative two armor. Gonna take some pretty big hits from this familiar as well as Super himself. And with one more refraction charge, should be easy pickings for them. So, good movement here, knowing that they can take advantage of the dire advantage, the fact that they have a Templar Assassin, and go ahead and deliver those big right clicks. So, it looks like he's gonna need help with one more individual. He doesn't have any refraction left, so yeah, there's gotta be somebody else to come help him. Otherwise, this job will not be done. Take too long. But they wanna be careful about it, they wanna be sneaky and uh, bring it down to 3,500. They just have to make sure the enemy doesn't know. Siler kind of doing his own thing up on the top lane, very close to Lincoln's, and when that happens, it's so hard to pin him down. Like, they obviously don't have any items that break Lincoln's automatically, and uh, that means they're probably going to have to commit Winter's Wrath of Nature every time they try to kill Morphling. Down here, back in the pit, it's going to be Templar Assassin with a little bit of mana, a lot more HP. You're going to be able to finish this off in no time at all, and that means Aegis and a ton of experience, super Roshan jumping up to level to 12 out of that. Absolutely incredible to get the solo experience on a hero like that. Now on top lane, Epicenter going down on Marana, Morphling to get the last hit. FY is going to get hit by the Dust Cold Snap though, dodging out the EMP. FY down to one Burrow Strike. Is he going to be able to turn this around? Just on to Ysera, not onto Winter, but the Hand of God, the right clicks. Big damage coming in, and Ysera is forced to force staff away. So, good movement from FY and from Silar, picking off two for free. And uh, now putting some damage into the Radiant's tier two top, top while they attack. simultaneously pressure the mid. I mean, you got an Aegis, might as well use it. Put some damage in here and take up a few hits from the tower. So, fortification will allow these towers to both persist a little bit longer, but uh, Orange need to make something happen, or this is going to get out of hand very quickly. We do see up top, big blink burrow on to Sarah, but they're just going to tornado and walk away. And these three don't really have any more incentive to pursue. Moonlight Shadow coming out, Sox on the flank from the east. Zanking still has a blink burrow, but here comes Sox. Popping off the arrow right in Tinker's face. Do they have the nuke to finish the job? It doesn't look like it. Instead, massive server wards come down, but Siler locked in place. Strength morphing up as best he can, but taking too much damage. Will they actually be able to bring him down? No. He just morphs too hard. Finally, they pin him in. He is locked in position without enough mana to wave for him, but they still haven't finished him. Star Stomp 1 and 2. They guarantee the kill. Tinker was picked off here. Now, FY. Going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Ysera, pops off the Sandstorm, but will be tornadoed out, I believe. Depends on Ysera's ambition. They probably will just go for the arrow. No, he blinks. FY blinks out, and now it's going to be hard to pursue on him. But they will go for the Ghost Walk. Another Sandstorm will be counteracted, and FY just barely dodging out the arrow. Now, probably pinned down from right-clicks alone. He'll go for one last play, but the cooldowns just aren't there. So they lose Silar, they lose ROTK Tinker, and they lose the Sand King. Some actually pretty hefty losses in that engagement in Orange. Feeling pretty good, but at the same time, they did lose towers. They lost the mid tower to CA. They lost the top tower, I believe, to, top tower, I believe, to Siler. So, Radiance middle as a whole, it's 
giving them some momentum as far as levels and such go, and they definitely are getting different big items like Sharky's Blink, but they need more. They need to make sure that they're not losing ground every time that they take a fight, which for the moment seems to be the case. I mean, Silar Morphling, he's going to split push, he's going to control things, and hell, he's going to have attack. this Ethereal Blade out in no time. Still, if anybody can handle it, it's the Sarah Invoker, Wex Stout. Gonna go in for some counter push down yes. on bottom lane here. It's gonna be Socks to take too much damage though, so he will fall before any of that occurs. Now will we see the initiation? Sarah underneath his tower is actually heading for the hills, just slowing down his opposition Radiance with that ghost block, but it's not attack. enough to save the Shadow Shaman. Fall. They lose the tower, they lose another kill. Siler just farmed out of his mind. Net worth 10.4k. This guy has gotten CS after CS, kill after kill. There's very little that can be done to lock this guy down. They get the Lincoln Sphere pop Radiance with the Wrath of Nature, Shadow Blade attack. on Winter, but I just I don't know Dyer's if they can even hold. Like, this is a very casual position here at the Tier 2 bottom, but it's 19 minutes in. They just don't have much going for them, and two are respawning. So Siler once again picks up a tower lasted. 11k net worth on this guy in 19 minutes flat. That is absolutely insane. We do see a flank. Winter does have Shadow Blade, does have Moonlight Shadow. Double him this OP, but... I don't think they're really going to be able to get much. Like, we see the initiation. Ysera hits one with the tornado, but they're just being turned around on immediately. They're meld strike back. Tinker's going to drop down to some great nukes from those two, but can Super and Siler turn it around? The arrow will fly, hits on a creep. Super on the run. Meld is not going to work for him underneath this sentry ward here once again. Aegis will pop. Very difficult position for him to be in. Without BKB, without blink, he is going down. So Super dies twice. I think in the meantime, Siler was farming wards, to be honest. No, no, he didn't. He just uh, farmed out the creep wave and waved away. So in the end, some considerable losses for Vici Gaming. Losing the two lives on the Templar Assassin, uh, Isera initiating for the team and making some big plays happen. <laughs> Unfortunately for them, FY was nowhere near the fight, but uh, is now making his way to try to see Winter. Go for the big right clicks with that uh, Shadow Blade. Follows through with Burrow Strike into Epicenter, but Winter! Oh, he was worried that Winter juke to the west and... Instead, Winter gets out with 80 HP. Very painful. In the meantime, we do see the EMP connecting onto the Morphling, making it so that he cannot morph sufficiently. Only 17 strength running on him right now. So they get the Lincoln Sphere, I believe, with a four staff, and then they can cold snap him and EMP him down. So nice movement there. Makes uh, Siler's life very difficult indeed. So FY stocking up. This is an interesting build for Sand King. Of course, it's very mana intensive. Uh, pop the Shadow Blade all the time. It's like, obviously, how much the Blink Dagger used to cost. So when he wants to initiate, it's, it's very weird. But, I mean, you can get into some obscure positions. It's still, in my opinion, by no means preferable to a four staff to a, a Veil of Discord. But right now, he, he feels like he can do a lot of work if he's just mobile and active and forcing the enemy supports to buy sentries. Speaking of, right now, no detection whatsoever on Shadow Shaman or on Chen. Actually, on the entire team lineup of Orange, subsequently. Top so when Vici Gaming attack. go in with Sandstorm, go in with Shadow Blades, they're not going to be detected out by anything but what's already on the map. Now going in, they're going to go for the Burrow. Easy peasy onto Winter. They pop off the dust, and look at that meld damage. Absolutely absurd from Super. He's able to bring down Winter out, no problem at all. So Winter delayed on his next item pickup. His Midas is sitting here. Off cooldown, but unavailable. Center Stomp, though? I don't know. I actually want to see one of those cool plays where um, Chen goes ahead and persuades a creep and then tests the face is back. I've only seen it in Dota 1, but it is absolutely hilarious. And when you ha p possess a neutral um, that is being BOT'd to, you gain control of it, and you gain control of its positioning, and Test of Faith is an instant thing on units under your control. So if you're quick enough on the draw and you see something that's BOT'd to by the Tinker, you can actually steal the creep, send him back to the fountain, and if he doesn't have a Ghost Scepter, he's completely screwed. I guess Blink might be okay, but even still. It depends on his reaction time. Archie Kane's super stealing this gigantic stack. That's actually pretty brutal. I don't even know if our orange stack this themselves because they have no incentive to. They don't have any good ancient clearers other than the serpent wards because they cleave. So in this case here, I think it might have been Vici Gaming doing most of the stacking and 
Ah, them just taking the fruits of the spoils. Now Dagon 1 coming out on the Tinker. He's already got his blink up for maneuverability. And it's going to get bad from here. S-Blade Morphling plus Dagon Tinker. That's when the heads start rolling. That's when the lasers start flying. And it's going to get very dangerous very quickly. If you're a member of Orange. We will see the Blink Hex coming into Super. Refraction charges to be chewed into, but there are the Master Serpent Wards. Phase boots out, but gets hit by the Shackle. And that's going to be all she wrote on that one. Nice little pickoff. Does cost them a few CDs, but in the end, they will be able to take him down. Now, a oh, great arrow coming out onto FY, and that's going to be another return kill. He tries to go for the Sandstorm Burrow, but the shack, the Ether Shock post Sentry is going to be enough to bring him down. However, even though they picked off two heroes for f over 30 seconds, pushing on. This tier 2 seems a difficult prospect. They have no mass serpent wards. This Warfling farmed up with the Ethereal Blade and he's running full agility. This guy does so much damage with the Ethereal Blade. We'll see the EMP come out though. Warding them off the tower and here comes the creep waves. Uh, march machines, march, march, march. But here's Siler with the big nuke. Who's he targeting? It's gonna be the Invoker and he's gone. Immediately replicating back and uh, just evaporating an Invoker that uh, only has the four points in claws. It's, it's not a bad allocation of claws points, it's actually pretty standard, but the bottom line is it doesn't give him enough strength to persist through that kind of damage. Siler, just a little bit too overwhelming right now, and that's without Dagons force. on top. Now, speaking of Dagons, RTK gonna go for one more Blink, Soul Ring, and Dagon on Winter, and he'll get it. Very nice movement from RTK, finding a great opportunity, and uh, putting it in the bag. Pressure coming to Socks. He has to realize this happened. You lose lives on mid, you lose lives on bottom, they're gonna make their move up top. He pops the Moonlight Shadow, they pop the Lincolns, they use the dust, and that should be an easy melt trick kill. Gonna go to Sand King, actually, FY. Greedy <laughs> as all get out, decides he needs that kill, but you know, secured indeed. They wanna make sure that the leapless Marana can't escape. Anyways, pressure coming in on the mid lane. It should be an easy pick off here onto the Visage. No trouble here. The Familiar doesn't even have the stone form, so he's just going to die. And Invoker. Cheeky as always with his boisterous ego. Still, like I said, they can't push out on it very easily. If they got to pick on RTK, that'd be a different story. But for right now, you're always worrying about waveforms up top, clearing out your creep waves, marching the sheens down mid and bot. And that means that you can't even get close to the tower. Once you do get close to the tower, like say you, I don't know, killed off the Tinker, then you have to worry about the Sand King, who has level 2 ultimate, who is working towards Veil of Discord, and is going to give your team a hell of a lot of problems because they don't have any durability. Like I said, Mech, Hand of God, that's their durability. Their actual raw HP, I don't think anybody's above 1500. Yeah, 1385 is their max HP. So, hand of God, they can only do so much when you've got these big nukes coming out. Necronomicon going to come out for an Ancient Prophet soon enough, but we'll see if it's actually going to change this game. They, they definitely need to end it fast before Siler gets too big, but I am almost fearful that that's already occurred. And that threshold has passed and it's already too late, but we'll see. For right now, rush attempt number two going to come through and should be pretty easy pickings once again with the max meld. Invoker, nice EMP Tornado, gonna hit on two. A lot of mana stolen, given right back to the Invoker. But they don't seem dissuaded. They're gonna go right back into the pit. Treants will scout it, but they're not gonna be able to do anything about it. And of course, Sand King's gonna be lurking. Oh no, he's actually pretty low on mana because the EMP connected. Maybe he won't be able to counter initiate. And this gives Orange a small opening. Vici know this though, and they're gonna back off, leaving it again at low value, but not killable value. If Orange go in there, they're just pretty much sitting ducks for the AoE Wombo combo of Vichy Gaming. Haste up for TA as well, BKB. If you BKB and then haste turn, you don't have to worry about the tornado dispelling it, and you can just kind of go ham. But we'll have to see order of operations for Super here. He certainly knows what he's doing. So I'll trust him to try to take, make the most of this I don't know. Now we do see the bottle, or I don't even know what I'm saying way. anymore. Arrow will fly in a range creep. With that on cooldown, they're going to try to go for the rush kill. Treants down, Meld Strike through. Easy pickings with this Medallion of Courage. They go for the Moonlight Shadow, but it's already too late. RTK drops two marches, and Siler picks up the Aegis. 
Dyer's top tower is under attack. Top lane, Siler. Perfectly happy farming here. We are going to see the Blinkets pod, the Grey Blink Hex, and the Shackles. They kill off Siler for the first time, but he's coming back with full Agi. Ready to rumble. The arrow, though, a great arrow, but he obviously can morph during that disable. So, the initial kill was really good. Blink Hex is something that you just can't respond to if your Lincoln is on CD. While my camera screws up, we do see Super pursuing on Isera, but with no detection. They're coming up empty-handed. Even Chen in a weird spot, but Isera gives him the TP. He gets Test of Faith, and Insidious C uses the scroll. That's actually some really solid teamwork there. Anyways, um, yeah. In this position, Hex is one of the few skills other than Silences that prevents a Morphling from toggling on his Morph. So in that situation, it's the best way for them to bring him down in a quick burst, a quick one-two punch. And all they had to do was get his Lincoln's on cooldown, and they used the Fury and Ultimate to do just that. So very nice, slick little move, set them up for a nice kill. But the Serpent Wards were again committed to this Tier 2 tower, and for the second time, they haven't brought it down. 380 HP remaining. FY arrow, he blinks and I don't even know how that dodges it. That's was, I don't know if it was range, if it was just barely getting out of the hitbox of it, but either way, it's a pretty way to, pretty silly way to blink for the same king. Anyways, let's so continue the pressure up here on the mid. Plenty of mana available for this big epicenter. We'll see if he gets the op opening. Siler so certainly feels like he has the opening. One replicant in a defensive position and he'll go as deep as he wants to to try to bring down pretty much anybody. Like I said, nobody has that high of an HP pool. We'll see the EMP try to throw out on Super, but Radiance not gonna be clicking in his mana pools. Nice little tornado, but this tower is gone. Their only option is to turtle all the way outside of base. In fact, Blink Bro attempt from FY might be punished here as they counterplay with Sharky's hacks. But now the BKB, super going hard onto Sharky. The last right click will be disjointed by invisibility. Thank goodness for raking up Moonlight Shadow. The fade time there saved his life. But just because you're alive doesn't mean you can hold. They need to drop the Mass Separate Wards if they're going to guarantee this position. But Vici Gaming, knowing they have that up their sleeve, might be hesitant going up against this choke point. There's the tornado. Available as well. The OTN, there's nothing to stop RTK though. Throwing out his spells, dropping another march, and we look at Sand King on the eastern flank. Looking for his opening. Fortified. So Super will tank up the tower, no problem attack. with this refraction. Winter, just looking for his opening to jump back in. For now, pushing out on the top. But the tower has been chipped away, at, down to 500 HP. And they're looking to, I think, bring it down with this next wave. So there will be the arrow coming out, Siler, but he, again, can morph up. It means his ethereal blade will do less damage, same with the adaptive. But here's that epicenter from FY, mecked up, trying to keep him alive. And he will Radiant actually survive, but this tier 3 tower is not so fortunate. Radiant now, more pressure. Tinker, laser. Master boards, easy money, but it doesn't look like they're focusing him down for the moment. They're just going to retreat, taking that tier 3 with them. And Familiars will, for like the second or third time, this clash will tank up the arrow for them. So Winter is forced back. Drop the Necro though, so Dyer's it's going to be a lot of farm for Tyler coming out here. Now he picks up the Mantis style. A lot of stats for this guy. He also has a great uh, utility in this Manta. You activate that and you're able to dodge out of a number of things. You might throw a body in the way of an arrow at the last second. You'll mess up the targeting on Shadow Shaman trying to initiate on you. All these good things if you just have the right reflexes. In the meantime, Dagon 3 is coming out for Tinker. They just want to S-Blade and Dagon one person, and they're an adaptive strike away from death. It doesn't matter who they are. There is nobody that can survive through that, even with the cloaks. Speaking of, uh, just want to mention that casual cloaks are a great item pickup in this situation. The physical damage from TA is the only non-magical damage they really have to worry about here. So by picking up the cloaks, they effectively increase their HP against everybody but TA and Morphling's right clicks. Um, substantially. It's very good for a casual item pickup, even if they don't further it into a hood or a pipe. It's as cost-effective as can be. But counteracting it, this Veil of Discord essentially just is the anti-cloak. He puts that down on everybody and they are gone. If they get a good epicenter like they did last time around, there's no coming back from that. There's no me easy mech up. Siler going for the big damage, but popping on the Lincolns, RTK. 
looking to rearm for another blink. Fortunately, the detection is quite limited right now. Dyer's there is no Gemitru site. So they are just going to pursue gradually up to the high ground while Orange chooses to heal up. So good Moonlight Shadow to scatter, and there is absolutely no detection on the side of Beachy, but Radiant's it doesn't stop them from focusing attack. the very visible target, the Rax. EMP though, Radiant's really, really good EMP. Actually, I think Morphling replicated away to dodge that one out, so they're able to avoid it for the most part. They take the melee Rax, and they're happy with that. So looking at the gold graph here, it looks pretty bleak. 16k for Skylar. We also say that it is 13 to 14,000 experience advantage for VT Gaming. They have full control of the map. They're constantly pushing waves in. Now they have a Rax advantage. And Orange, they just can't carry hard enough. Like, Invoker will pick up an Orchid, but then what? Like, he'll be able to maybe get a kill on a Morphling once or twice, but doesn't really pack that extra oomph behind it. Now we see the Hex coming through. Skylar going to get hit up by the Serpent Wards, but they're in retreat. Super delivers a great meld right click onto his target. There is also the rockets coming through. But uh, BKB charged Trump for Super. And also they forced. I was going to say they forced Morphling to morph a little bit, but no. He's full agi still. He is ready to rumble. He really wants to get some big nuke damage coming out on his opposition. Still, the Lincoln Sphere has popped off, and that's, I think, their cue to at least fall back for the first 14 second CD. But RTK didn't get that memo. A little bit of creep block, but otherwise. Oh gosh, no. He, he will shatter. Very quick test of faith, and they will pin him down. Radiant creeps OP for path block. But uh, yeah, he went ham. He got the invoker. And Dagon is pretty pretty crazy on this guy, but not sure if it's enough. A nice little adaptive strike to stop the leap. But in the end, they're just focused on this tower. They'll get it for sure. And Radiant's Winter still taking his time to slow fallen. push down on the other lanes. So, like, he activates Necro, he trees all the time, but he's just not Radiant's farmed enough to actually right click to fallen. down quickly enough. And is kind of at the mercy of the backdoor protection. Radiant's top Along with that Tinker, for the most part, has been just always making sure that the lanes are pushed out to, to here and here every time they're pushing on this top lane. Now they finish off on the range racks this time around, leaving the melee at 530. In response to the Moonlight Shadow, they will retreat. So that leaves one range racks, one melee racks. About uh, similar HP percents once VG Gaming sees them again. But otherwise, uh, just putting Orange further on the defensive. They don't want to be on the defensive. They want to really make kills happen, but that's a fake. And that's legit. Sanking. Will he go for the opening? Winter coming in. Big right click's coming through onto Siler, but he's not alone. And he's going to have some backup from the epicenter of the Sanking. He Shadow Blades forward for some more movement speed. Goes for his next target, but he is out of mana. So it's going to be RTK Dagon dropping Winter down to 80 HP, but not sealing the deal. Because the veil was not uh, put up immediately. Now Taker getting hit by the arrow. Big damage onto him. I think he might have also expended the last will of the melee Necronomicon warrior. So taking a huge amount of damage and being forced to buy back at level 16. That's a very costly death, but he just goes on and says, screw it, I'm back in the action. So he's back up. Not really sure if he can do anything here on the top lane while they're playing turtle, but eh, for now, he's just going to make sure that the lanes are continuously pushed out until this next first spawn. Looking for the blade mail strap, but like I said, the effective HP on orange aren't isn't really that substantial. They like don't even have that much health to work with. So yes, they could kill the Sand King and the Tinker off by going for like four or five blade mails, but they'd always die in the process because of the AoE damage. Because of the fact that they just don't have good raw EHP. Super in a bad spot here. Will BKB though, and there's really nothing to stop him from just walking away. They can pursue all they want, but Isera really has to get a good tornado off if they're gonna be able to actually seal the deal, and they don't have vision for that. You look at the vision for right now, one Radiant Observer Ward here on the high ground, and uh, one over here. So those have been up for a good amount of time. Uh, quite impressive, but I don't think this gem has been that active. Like, they just picked up the gem very recently, Fenrir did, and if he wanted to scout that with familiars, he certainly could. It's just unlikely. Moonlight Shadow once again, not afraid with this gem available. Illusion's gonna be pounding away at this tier 3. Tornado only catches Creep. Sharky though on RTK. The arrow as well, and they bring down the Tinker. 82 seconds on the ground with no buyback. Now they do trade the Shadow Shaman, but that's a trade they're happy to make. And it will force 
Vici Gaming to really think carefully about their next set of moves. We will see the Melee Necro getting detection on his super, the cold snap and Desolator right clicks, and they get a second kill. Wow, Fenrir even gets stomped. They force staff in. This is the plays I'm talking about. Insidious C with the force staff on his own centaur. But now the Grave Chill getting him away a little bit. Still, the Penitence is enough to set up the arrow, and that's the kill. Holy smokes, is that a play. But FY, trying to answer back. Will not be outshined in this game, but in this case, he won't find the pick he's looking for. Oh my gosh, I want an instant replay on that Chen. Four staff forward, Centaur Stomp, Micro City. Now we just see the Shadow Blade coming in, Blink Burrow onto two, but can Siler actually get a kill off of this? The Veil's up, but the four staff is out. Gonna see Shadow Shaman work on a Yule Scepter. Pretty good pickup in this situation. Just kind of a cheap stick to get some disables out there and buy yourself some time. If you're under pressure from the opposition, maybe an epicenter's on top of you, you can always use it on yourself to delay some time. But it's still, it's just that. It's the kind of ghetto pickup. It's not expensive, and in turn, it doesn't add enough for them to really swing forward in this game. The Scythe of Ice will do that, but there's still about 800 gold off for Winter to finish that one out. City of C. Making the move downtown, but it's going to be Moonlight Shadow on top that kind of sets things up. Unfortunately, they don't see ROTK in the tree line fast enough. They try to break the trees with the Nature's Call, but the only way they could actually find him was a good tornado. And uh, instead, it's just going to be an, another Roche, this time with cheese. Cheese going to Morphling, Aegis going to TA, and that should be enough to break the base here. Like, we've seen some great plays for Morin, some great holds, but enough is enough, guys. Golden Experience is not their ally here. The scalability on Vici Gaming, now the Aegis and Cheese, it makes it a very desperate proposition. The only way they win this is with Hard Rat from Winter, and uh, I just, I don't know if even Bulldog could rat hard enough for this. Like, it is a very... Tough spot, but I mean, you compare it to Game 5, TI3, Na'Vi versus Alliance, Fed TA, looking for an opening, but you got that Nature's Prophet. You can make them shine. We'll see if they get the opening. Right now it's going to be TA with the backdoor protection gone to just cremate the range tracks. Or uh, even maybe go for the melee. For now, just the range. No hex just yet, though, so they're just going to pin in super inside the sprout. But he'll pop the VKB very early for this one and gonna take some big hits here another four staff troll he four staffs the troll the ensnare pierces through magic immunity and the centaur stomp forces the ages holy shit insidious c this guy what a player absolutely out of his mind like i'm like oh he can't do it yet he can't do it yet uh, if he tries the centaur it won't happen but he goes for the troll he knows it will work adapt to strike on cd it's not going to be able to bring down the chen he just hands the gods and heads back home attack. Oh my gosh, this Radiant Chen, Insidious C, Orange Esports. He needs a solo sponsorship for those MLG plays. Radiant you see Morana taking some hits here, but the Lincoln Sphere will keep him up. Pop in the other one in turn, but the arrow will not come. Another four staff stomp. This one not on the mark, Radiant's though. And Sox taking fallen. some big hits. He will fall. You Buyback available on him, though. He'll pop it immediately. Now we see Sarah incinerated by the Siler. So much agility for him. Wow, that is actually like 300 agility, just shy of it. So no surprise he's able to burst somebody down practically in their fountain. Silo look for another, he gets it. The adaptive strike for a double kill. And he has that cheese still. So that's full mega creeps, that's gonna be the game, but they get a couple more uh, shots at them before the concede comes through. That's gonna do it for game one here in the best of two series in the WPC Ace League. Some amazing plays from both sides, but in the end, it's gonna be Vici Gaming to take the game awesome awesome game but there was just Siler Morphling and FY Sand King it's just like what more can you do the RTK Tinker was pretty interesting to see the fact that he only died once or twice early was actually quite fortuitous for them in the end he's still the, the prime feeder at five nine and six actually he died the most times of any hero in the entire game but milk super semi milk award or not he's able to do a lot of work a lot with that Dagon with the Marches continuously pressuring and making it so that Winter can't channel his inner rat. In the end, we're going to see Vici Gaming take the ga first game of the best of two, and Orange are down for their last legs. They played, they're playing six games tonight in total, five already in the books. All losses for Orange. Can they take a single game tonight in this triple header? 
we'll be seeing in just a few minutes. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the game as well as the commentary. If you did enjoy the commentary, feel free to support me by following me on twitter.com slash blazecasting. You can also send me some constructive criticism if you did not enjoy the commentary, and I'll try to improve as best I can. But uh, it's just a privilege and my pleasure to help out with uh, the commentary for this series in particular here on Beyond the Summit, and I hope you guys did indeed enjoy. Shout out to BTS, shout out to WPC Ace, shout out to both of these teams. They played like champs. But that's going to be it for me here. I think we're going to be doing a switcheroo for the stream from Game 1 to Game 2, and uh, I believe that means you'll be joined by the, the lovely voice of Pimp Uncle, but that has yet to be confirmed with me directly, so I'll stick around see what happens, but I do have a cast in 50 minutes, and I, I can't, unfortunately, stick around for the final game tonight, so that is going to be it here for me, seeing game two from Vici Gaming and Orange in just a few minutes, guys. Thank you so much for joining me tonight, and I hope you, sincerely hope you guys enjoyed.